So I came in 1992 to the medical school. Um, I was um, just graduated from Boston University. So this was my very first job and it's been my only job. Uh, I've been in this building all this time. Um, I actually, my advisor at BU was the, uh, um, one of the, Dr. Lincoln Gray, who I ended up in his lab, was his mentor. So they actually talked to each other. I actually had just sent a letter saying, um, you know, I'm looking for jobs. And he just said, just come down to Houston. And I did, and he actually offered me the job. So um, I remember he took me to UCT to HR and I submitted my stuff. So that's how I really basically just started here in his research lab. It was a small lab in the clinical department. And, uh, and I basically did a whole bunch of things. I did things from, you know, working on the very old computers, changing parts of it myself, soldering them on. And I actually also did um, uh, chicken research. I actually had to do surgery on chickens, raise them. Um, at the same time as I was the land manager for the entire otolaryngology department, which was pretty small. So, um, so in 1993, I believe, Dr. Ribble, who was the, the, de the department, I mean, the dean of the medical school at the time, said, you know what, all departments should have email. So that was a mandate, and at that time I went to the uh, chair of the department, and I said, okay, make me your official land manager. I'll move up from the lab, and I'll, be, and I'll do, and I'll bring email to the department. And that's basically how I, um, got into more IT stuff. Um, I mean, my, my degree was in biomedical engineering, so I already had some technical stuff, but I basically went and got a server, learned how to do Unix, um, got email involved, went and uh, networked the whole department. It was on the sixth floor and the fifth floor, uh, ran cables um, to, the, you know, to the chases, we had vampire taps, we did all that stuff. I did all that stuff at the time and we got on uh, with the email. So that's how I basically um, started my career here at UT Medical School. My career has really, uh, um, uh, one of the reasons I'm still here is because I moved up and I changed departments uh, my duties changed, um, and I grew as, a, a, as, as all that happened. And the med school really grew kind of with me at the same time. Um, like I said, I started in a small department, then the department was too small to really have a land manager on their own. So I started talking to other departments and I became departments of multiple small departments, uh, land manager of multiple small departments, ortho for example. And then with that, and then I basically uh, went down to the dean's office in 96, where I've been basically there the whole time since then. Um, and um, so um, after the flood, after Allison in 2001, we had this nomadic life for a few, two, three years. We were, we moved from, you know, different floors in the med school. We were at UCT at one time, at Jesse Jones Library. And then after that, the med school had some financial issues. We, um, you know, we lost a lot of money during that flood. So um, a lot of changes happened at the time. And one of my um, ideas was to basically centralize all the land managers into one office in the medical school, which became MSIT. Everybody knows now what MSIT is, but at the time, uh, so we did that around 2003, 2004. And slowly we, we centralized everybody. So everybody became part of uh, MSIT and our group grew. Um, the type of services we did grew. Um, and, and basically we started dealing with students. We were dealing with research before, uh, with clinical um, departments, basic research departments, everything basically. And, um, in two, and then early 2000, I think 11, something like that, we started supporting all the clinics. And so that also grew. We, um, we used to give um, really good support in the med school. So our, doc, our doc, Dr. Carlos Soto at the time, our dean, asked that we also support all of the UTP. And when we started supporting them, they were very small, not small, but they had about you know, 35 clinics now we have more than 150 clinics. You know, we used to have less than a thousand computers. 
Now we have more than 5,000 computers. So that has, and we used to be in a smaller area in Houston. Now we're all over the place, uh, from Beaumont to Richmond. Um, so the med school has grown a lot. From a student perspective, the number of students have grown, the number of residents have grown, the number of faculty has grown. Uh, but we're still trying to give them the best service we can. And that's, um, that's kind of my career here at the med school. Really, I'm proud of a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, I'm proud of MSIT. You know, I, I put that together. It used to be MIS before I came here. And I put that, like I said, um, we grew. We had something in, in, in our mind, which was basically best user support possible. We were user centric. Everything that we did was for the user. And I tried to change that um, from basically being desktop support or whatever to just saying we're user support. Um, so, and, and, and I'm very proud of my team. I think I have excellent um, people. I've picked, I have more than 50 people. I've hired all of them over the years. A lot of them have been with me for a long time. Besnik, for example, has been with me 20 years. Um, and, um, and I'm really proud of them. We, we, we give excellent support across the university, across the med school, for students, for residents. So uh, I'm very proud of that. The medical school has influenced me big time. Uh, I grew up here, right? I started f directly from college. I was single. Um, and I met my wife here. She was in the dental school. My four kids, uh, Dr. McNeese is the, the, the doctor for all four of them since they were born. And my oldest is 20. So, um, uh, so really, I grew with the med school. Uh, they went to Memorial Hermann. We got to clinics here. So um, my life really, basically, without the, I don't know what it would be without the med school. Uh, it's a huge part of it. Uh, this is my, my, my second life here. Um, and so, so, yes, so there was a lot of... The other thing is, basically, I, um, when I first came here, the diversity of the place was, was really amazing. You met so many different people, different backgrounds, and, uh, and that's the thing that really kept me here. Um, some of the students, I was the same age as the students at the time, and now I'm older than their parents, kind of, so you kind of see. And then sometimes you see these students, now they're senior faculty on their own, and so that's really cool to see that and, and see how, how we grew. Um, so that was how I think the med school has influenced me. How did I influence the med school? I don't know if I really influenced the med school, but I've influenced a lot of people in the med school. Um, I, 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 like I said, my, my team is an awesome team. Um, they do a lot of things uh, for the university. I don't think you can do anything now without IT, right? I mean, IT is, is involved in everything. And so anything that we do really influences the medical school. Um, how we get research, um, uh, big complex projects approved, how we support um, patients, um, all of that is affected by what we do. Uh, and, and I think with that MSIT, a lot of things can't be done really. So I have a couple of things. I think one is, is something that for people that have been around for a while will tell you. It's um, Tropical Storm Allison. It was a, an amazing thing that happened to the med school. It was a big disaster at the same time. It changed the med school completely. Um, physically, the basement and the ground floor are completely are now different. For those of you that were here before, it, it's, the whole thing is very different, very nice now. Um, um, also, I remember when that, the, the, that hit, um, I was one of few people, like six, seven, eight people, that Rick Gaines and Dr. Buya came together. We came in our cars. We had to, I remember we all went in one van to, I think, Kmart or something, and we went and bought these plastic boots. We all put them on all together, and we went into the med school, and that was the first time we went and walked the whole ground floor. Um, and it was, I remember looking at computers everywhere and things smelled and it was, was, was an interesting thing. But um, that time, 
um, also got us really close together. Um, uh, my team had to come in and we had to go in and take all these computers out and we had to put them in a place, try to retrieve data from them. So that, that whole, that whole um, incident really basically changed a lot of the things that we did. For example, the data center used to be on the ground floor, now it's on the third floor. Um, all of computers that are in the basement and the ground floor now are all elevated. You know, there's a lot of things. We don't save things on the local hard drives. So it's all saved on, on servers, etc. So it really changed a lot of the stuff that we do. It also, because of um, the financial hit that the med school got during that, um, during Allison, it changed um, how MSIT is. As I just mentioned before, uh, that's when I basically came up with this idea to centralize everything, be more efficient, so the, tomb bec the, the team grew, and that's where we are right now. It's all because of, of Allison. One personal memory that I don't think many people know about me, which I always think about uh, as I grow in my career, is when I was a research assistant in Dr. Lincoln Gray's lab, we used to um, uh, you know, hatch chicken eggs because that's what we did research on. So one time we had a bigger egg than it was actually a Pekin duck that came out of it and so um, and I remember I kept it and it imprinted on me because uh, you know when these animals when they grow the, the birds they imprint on on and I thought it was its mother or something so as it grew it used to follow me everywhere in the med school so I would like go I used to go to the sixth floor and back down the fifth floor it would actually hop up the stairs following me uh, people would see, see the little duck following me everywhere I don't know how now it is with all the safety stuff what we have but that's what we had. We, I, I had this little duck that basically followed me everywhere as I worked. It was, it was really cool. Um, and I eventually took it home. And there was a big pond in, in the apartment that I used to live and I eventually I released it there. So that's a, a personal memory that uh, I have of actually working here, uh, which, which always brings a smile to my face.